Okay, you guys, this weather business is not funny. <laughs> Burr, welcome to Coffee and Headlines. This is Puerto Vallarta and it is so cold. It's not supposed to be this cold here in Puerto Vallarta, but it is freezing. I mean, with all due respect to those of you that are up in Canada and the United States, where there's real white snow down here, you know, it's like we're just not used to this. So... I had to make an entrance, and that's enough of that. So let's get rid of that. Oh, God, it's cold. So this is my favorite fleece blankie, and Luna is very quietly sitting next to me. And I'm going to drop that on a chair, and you just watch. Luna will eye it, and she will immediately fly to it because she likes my fleece blanket. Okay, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee and Headlines. It's so cold in Puerto Vallarta. I can't believe this. This is a place, this is a cold place where we get together and we exchange headlines, topics, comments, ideas, questions, suggestions on how Puerto Vallarta works, how Mexico works, how we can interact better, how we can uh, fit in, how we can learn about our culture, our customs, our habits. Today, we are going to look at how Mexicans celebrate New Year's Eve, and we're going to react to some of the very hysterical suggestions that the internet says we are supposed to be doing because we're in Mexico. And what else do we do? We just keep ourselves amused and entertained um, and inspired, inspired to love this destination more and more <clears throat> as times goes by, as time goes by. For me, it is always a pleasure to hang out with you guys every morning. It is it is a new habit. It is a wonderful habit. I can't stop doing it. And of course, if this is the first time that you are here with us, you are more than welcome to join our cluster. Feel free to write the word uh, new in your comments so that we can give you a proper welcome. And if you have important comments that you wish to share with everybody, feel free to just add the letter Q at the beginning of your comment, and we will be so glad to take a look at them. Um, I will have you know that uh, I was very tickled this morning reading all of your comments from yesterday's walk. It was so much fun to do it. Um, somebody even joked with me and said, today is Tylenol Thursday, and boy, is that accurate. My legs are very, very happy to be doing as little as possible. Um, but it was worth it. It was really wonderful. And I noticed that a lot of you look at looked at it as a new thing to add to your bucket list. And, and again, I'll, I'd go back tomorrow. I really would because it is such a wonderful walk. Needless to say, I would be um, taking it a lot slower. <clears throat> I took it fast because I was broadcasting or I was recording and I wanted to make sure that the video was easy to edit afterwards. Anyhow, <clears throat> oh, let me take a quick look at who is here. And um, and then we can continue on with the broadcast. There is a crazy amount of news to share today, um, quite unexpectedly compared to uh, Christmas Eve when I was just scrounging. Well, it was really Christmas Day. I was scrounging for news, and I may be scrounging for news tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. But uh, Claude's in the house. Anaheim's in the house. Michal is in the house. Uh, let's see. Happy New Year to you, Doug. It's great to see you. Happy New Year to you, Tapia. Uh, yes, lots of rain here last night as it was forecasted. We had rain and it was cold and it was dreary. It was a perfect day to be home <clears throat> drinking wine. 
Um, best of days to all from San Mateo. Christy, is, oh, it's always a pleasure to see you here joining us. Um, Boston's in the house. Hello, Jennifer. Lots of great friends are with us today. Oh, my gosh. If Puerto Vallarta is cold, Christine, San Miguel de Allende must be freezing. Sly says, brr, and I agree. Uh, let's see. Pa -dum -pa -dum -pa -dum -pa. Let's see what else do we have. Sherry is almost here. We've been exchanging messages, and I'm so excited for you. I really, really am. What's the temperature? Let me get to the weather in a second, James, but we will definitely get to that. Beth says it's 57 in Conchas Chinas. Um, actually, if you want to take a peek, oh my God, it's 17 degrees right now. Uh, feels like 19. We might as well do the weather while we're here. 17 degrees in lovely sunny Puerto Vallarta. Um, feels like 19. That would be 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Humidity is at 68%. And, um, and as we mentioned yesterday, we're going to continue to have a cold front. Um, clear through the day today with a high of 22, a low of 11. Uh, tomorrow, partly cloudy, a high of 24, a low of 11. And Saturday, clear through the day, high of 25, a low of 14. So as you can see, we're going to continue to have blanket weather, which is just fine because it's the end of the year. And um, who wants to be out? Nobody wants to be out. Anyhow, let's see. Let's see who else is here. Um, question, what was the low temperature well again it's been it's been low at night uh, I think I just mentioned the low temperature but um, right now the low right now it's 17 degrees and um, it's going down to the teens it's going down to 11 degrees Celsius tonight so it's going to be fairly fairly cold um, let's see what else do we have boom 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 and <clears throat> Can't figure out what to wear tonight's big New Year's Eve. Yoga pants or PJs? I hear you. I'm sticking to PJs. PJs and a blanket. Ah, uh, why is it so cold? There's a cold front coming from the north. That's what the weather forecast people said. I don't know exactly why it's here or who sent it, um, but but it is here, and it's here for a few more days. Uh, let's see. Happy New Year to everybody that is wishing happy new year happy new year back at you it is it is thursday by the way in case you're wondering uh it is is tylenol thursday anyhow uh, we see uh alan says am i running any marathon soon i can barely walk up the stairs but i am looking forward to more running next year christy oh my goodness christy a world music festival enterprise that fell apart through the covid pandemic christy and i were to collaborate again this year on organizing what was to be puerto vallarta's second world music festival after the successful uh festival that christy organized along with a few local musicians and i was invited to be part of that enterprise and of course we had a pandemic so i wish you uh, a happy new year, Christy, and I hope that your commitment to promoting local musicians continues undeterred, and I hope we'll get to collaborate in new and wonderful projects in the future. Um, let's see what else we have here. Um, bring a light jacket, Michael. You know, I always have one in the closet, and I wear it every now and then. Anyhow, <clears throat> we are all up to speed with the comments and Luna is still here with us she is oh my god yes Luna is looking at everything with lots of enthusiasm so we might as well um, look at um, the news let's go there okay let's start with our Canadian friends um, Yesterday, Canada dropped a bomb on all people that are outside of Canada that are hoping to get back into Canada. According to this um, news item, and I would certainly suggest that everybody interested in going to Canada continue to research this, um, Canada is to require all arriving air passengers to show uh, a negative COVID-19 test. 
the test has to be of the PCR variety and should have been taken at least, uh, should have been taken three days or within three days before arriving in Canada. So what this means is you are here, you're living here, you don't have to worry about it unless you're going to Canada soon. Or if you are here and you're on vacation and you are getting back to Canada next week, well, you better find a place where you can get a PCR test. We've mentioned a couple of them. We know that certain um, hospitals locally are making them available. Certain, la certain labs are making them available. I noticed Pam Thompson published something to that effect yesterday. Um, and, um, and again, this is the kind of thing that you may want to be very, very mindful if you're heading north um, and you're heading into Canada in the next few days. Um, <clears throat> we have a Lord COVID, apparently. In Mexico, our president, uh, Andres no Lo Manuel López Obrador, very publicly mentioned that he disapproved of this influential doctor in a clinic in the city of Toluca that decided that he was going to vaccinate himself and members of his family. This was um, Dr. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We have his name, Jose Rogel Romero. He is the director of a hospital in the city of Toluca called Adolfo Lopez Mateos. He was not even working on the front lines of COVID, but he decided, well, I am um, influential uh, and I'm going to get the vaccine. And people called him on it and uh, he was shamed and good for the president to not be for all this influential uh, abuse. Um, we also learned yesterday, thanks to Marcelo Ebrard, who is our foreign affairs uh, counsel chancellor, chancellor, counselor, chancellor. Counselor would be Diana Troy. Chancellor, I think, is the political figure. Um, um, Mexico is imminently approving the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. So if that means that we're going to have um, more vaccine sources, that is absolutely <clears throat> wonderful. Apparently, Mexico has already made a pre-purchase agreement for 77 million doses. Now, I have two links about this other vaccine, uh, which uh, are in English so that you can do some research if you care to do it. The one from Yahoo News saying the Oxford uh, AstraZeneca vaccine approval may be the most globally important yet. And um, the second one being the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine has three key advantages despite lower efficacy rate. Efficacy. Do you guys really use that word? I thought it was efficiency. Interesting. I will research efficacy um, later on and maybe I will even learn how to pronounce the word. And while we're with these news, well, we're at it with English news. Um, I know that there's a new mutation that has arrived in the United States and that might make some people concerned and so forth and so on. So here is an article also in English where Anthony Fauci says that the COVID-19 vaccine will very likely work on UK mutation. So, uh, so there you have it. And before we move into other areas, I'm going to take a look at your questions. And even though you haven't asked this, you probably are wondering, well, if the headlines are there for you to read, why am I reading them? Well, the answer is because I'm learning about more and more people that listen rather than watch the broadcast. Um, and they're doing this while they're exercising or on the go and whatnot. So we want to help people that uh, experience Coffee and Headlines as a podcast rather than as a broadcast. Um, comments from you. Let's take a quick look. The cold is coming from Canada. Angelica, keep it to yourselves. We don't want the cold from Canada. Um, seriously. Uh, Enrique asks, does anyone know of a good website to look for a real estate in Puerto Vallarta? Uh, absolutely. If you go into the... Uh, not Ampi. What is it called? The MLS, MLS website, multi-list service. You can find a lot of, of real estate uh, available. You can also look at real estate offices. Um, and I'm sure that other real estate 
friends that are watching will offer some more suggestions. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, yes and no, Bronica. Um, Pam Thompson is a very knowledgeable um, person in town, but she is not the only source of, of vaccines and vaccine information. For all I know, you can walk to any lab and, and you can get the vaccine. So I'm not putting down the wonderful efforts that Pam Thompson follows, but I know for a fact that Pam Thompson often gets inundated with requests and, 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 and requests for information and um, there are other sources. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, I read about this, how infuriating. However, it didn't have much to do with Puerto Vallarta, so I chose not to include it. Um, uh, my doctor told me that medical staff in private hospitals are not getting vaccinated. AMLO only approved free vaccines for public health care workers, and all private hospitals have to pay for their staff. Well, what can I tell you? Um, if that is the case, that is unfortunate, but ultimately, you know, the president and his staff know better what they're doing than, than, than I know, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's see what else we have. I think I'm caught up with your comments. So let me continue with more headlines because there is way, way more to share. And now we move on to our favorite underground party thrower, Jeffrey Sanker, who has made it into the international news or U.S. headline news uh, with all these parties that he organizes in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, so, yes, Jeffrey Sanker goes ahead with Puerto Vallarta Gay Circuit Party, undeterred by COVID surge. Um, and it is what it is. And I'll show you the link of, of where it is. Um, so that you can look at it on your own. Uh, for me, at this point of the game, to shame this effort or any other effort to challenge guidelines is truly a waste of energy and, and emotional energy. These people are going to do what they're going to do, regardless what, of what anybody else says. And I insist the best we can do is to take care of ourselves and protect ourselves. That is a war or a challenge that we can actually engage on and be successful at. Moving right along with more headlines, a couple of you had asked a few days ago about what was going on or what's the latest on the murder of uh, former Jalisco governor Aristoteles Sandoval. And I can tell you that at, after two weeks, the only thing they have is two women that were directly responsible for cleaning up the crime scene um, are in jail and they have also captured a suspect who is also in jail but we don't know much of anything about it. I actually drove past that intersection yesterday or was in a friend's car um, and uh, and all those restaurants are closed right now. They're seized by, by the federal police and the federal security members so we don't know exactly what is going to happen there. And we will continue to follow it, uh, follow this news story as we move forward. Uh, you may also want to know, and I think I'm, I'm skipping my, I'm skipping into the lighter headlines because we already told the weather. So I'm just going to cruise right through this broadcast and then we'll look at your comments in a little while. Puerto Vallarta is the fastest tourism destination to recover through the pandemic because Puerto Vallarta apparently has lowered its hotel rates the most. Um, according to this article from the very trustworthy Vallarta Opina. And um, according to this, Puerto Vallarta has uh, lowered uh, hotel fares by up to 27%. Uh, Cancun has lowered their rates 36%, Guadalajara 34%, Merida 38%, and Mexico City 67%. All these destinations are dropping hotel rates um, so that people will be excited about traveling, whether this is dropping rates to a more reasonable, real rate market. I don't know. I'm not a hotelier. So uh, I know from my friend Paul, 
who has a hotel, Hotel Mercurio, that um, many hotels or some hotels could not possibly drop their rates anymore because, I mean, they're supposed to be able to pay for their bills and whatnot. Um, but this seems to be a good time to visit Puerto Vallarta and other destinations. I was out and about walking on the street yesterday, on the sidewalk, really. And it's crowded. There are a lot of people walking out and about, and there's a good combination of people that wear face masks, other that don't. There's a lot of traffic. So I was so very happy to complete all my errands for the end of the year yesterday. And if all goes well, I won't leave the apartment again until um, Saturday or maybe Sunday. Luna is, as you can see, thrilled with boundless enthusiasm because I'm not going anywhere. Um, one of our own, the wonderful Sam Cress, was highlighted in today's uh, newspaper. Uh, I love the headline. Canadian tourist gifts food to those in need in Puerto Vallarta's El Centro or downtown area. So this little write-up is about uh, Sam Cress and her, her wonderful project called Angel's Kitchen, in which they have been uh, set up in, uh, in our main plaza, and they've been feeding other people, um, and, uh, and this has been a wonderful effort, and I know this because I follow Sam on Facebook, so congratulations to you, Sam, for um, getting noticed by the local uh, members of the press, uh, the local press, the Spanish press, so many times forget to acknowledge what a lot of members of the foreign community do to improve our community. We also learn from Noticias PB about the fact that the El Salado estuary has over 169 species of birds. <clears throat> I have to tell you that this is, this is one of the most underappreciated activities here in Puerto Vallarta. A visit to the estuary that is located uh, in front of Marina Vallarta between um, Costco and, no, between Sam's and, and the entrance to Marina Vallarta. It's a beautiful area. It is the, the one protected area within the city where you can, you can sight all kinds of flora and fauna and their guided tours. I believe they must be having them right now. And this is something that um, you may want to keep in mind, or me, we may actually do a video of it at some point so that we can take a look at what that is all about. Um, comment break? Yeah, let me take a quick look at what you're thinking about, and then we continue right along. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't see any cues, but you're always so chatty. It is wonderful. Do did did you do, did I do the video walk yesterday? Did I ever, buddy? Oh my goodness, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. But of course, you know where to find it. All the all the past broadcasts can be found either on the Facebook page or on the website. Let's see. Let's see. Thank you for the good wishes, Linda. I very much appreciate it. Appreciate them from you and from everybody else. Um, Catherine brings up a fabulously important point. Interesting that the workers are in jail and not the people who directed them to clean up. You know, this is a, a, a wrong assumption on my part. But when I, I saw that it was two women, I immediately assumed that it's the two cleaning ladies. I mean, there are cleaning gentlemen, but many places hire cleaning ladies. I mean, for the most part, it is women that do the cleaning, and I'm not saying that that's fair or unfair. That's just the way it is in Mexico. So it, it makes me wonder, I mean, did they actually send to jail the two ladies that didn't know any better than to follow the orders of their bosses saying, clean up this mess? I mean, who knows? And we may never find out, but it's it is it is one of those things. Uh, let's see what else. What else? My cousin Norma from Chicago. Mwah! Feliz año nuevo. Um, let's see what else. What else? Yes, do a video of El Salado Estuary, please. Check. I will add it to the list. I will be so very happy to do that, and I will do that sometime in the very near future. Zoe! Oh, no! Zoe from Provincetown is in the house. Zoe, when are you coming back? 
We want dates. We want you to come back to Puerto Vallarta and share your wonderful world of stories and music and song. And uh, we want to kidnap you again to go to the beach where nobody will find us. So please find your way back to Puerto Vallarta. We will miss you if you don't. Um, let's see. Let's see. Welcome and a new member to our clan in November. My grandnephew. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations on that. Okay, so moving on with a few more headlines that we have to cover today until we get to the very, very fun ending of Mexican New Year's Eve traditions. You won't believe what the Internet says we do during New Year's Eve. I was shocked, but we'll get to that at the end of this broadcast. In the meantime, let me show you this wonderful, this is really, really amazing, wonderful news from Nuevo Uh, from uh, Riviera Nayarit, rather, apparently there was a cigarette butt collection challenge on the beaches of Marina Vallarta. It was called Colilla Challenge, and Colilla being cigarette butt. And there's this organization that leads these, and they actually found 18,000 cigarette butts Uh, and they were recollected and they were sent to an organization that recycles, excuse me, recycles them to turn them into um, into paper. This is something uh, organized by a, a company called Echo Filter that works here in Mexico to produce recycled paper from cigarette butts. How wonderful is that? Um, several hotels organized this, including Gran Velas Riviera Nayarit, Hard Rock Vallarta, Ibero Star Playa Mita, Maribal Distinct, Distinct, Maribal Emotions, and so forth and so on. How wonderful it would be that um, uh, Puerto Vallarta's tourism board would embark in something like this. And better yet, how wonderful it would be if people that smoke on the beach would simply look after their cigarette butts after they're done smoking. Burying them in the sand does not count. I also have an interesting, fun article coming from, excuse me, coming from Condé Nast Traveler magazine. And this is this has been on my bucket list for some time. And I'm talking, of course, about the tequila train. This is a tequila, um, uh, endless tequila uh, train that goes from Guadalajara City to the town of Tequila. This is the Jose Cuervo Express. And what this is, you go on this very fancy train on a trip that lasts like eight or 10 hours because it starts in Guadalajara. Then you go down to the town of Tequila. Look at the inside of the train. Isn't that beautiful? And, um, you know, once you get to Tequila, you do some exploring and you visit uh, a couple of haciendas, including... Uh, Uh, the Cuervo Hacienda, I believe, where you can sample very, very elegant and wonderful tequilas. It's not inexpensive. It is $166 per person. Um, it is an 11-hour journey. It starts at 9 a.m. in Guadalajara. and uh, Or you can do a sunset train as well. For those of you that don't think it is, it is sporty to be drinking tequila in the morning. But this is definitely... One of those adventures that has been on my bucket list for some time, and it will continue there until it feels safe to do it. I will share the, head, um, the, the website with you so that you can consider it on your own. Of course, we are approaching the weekend, and we have great bookmarks from the New York Times. Five Things to Do This New Year's Weekend is one of them. Uh, and the other one would be 10 classical concerts to stream in January. So we will have a few things to look forward to. Um, let me see. Oh, my God, a lot of you know about the tequila train or have done it. This is really wonderful. I haven't had the pleasure, but we'll definitely do this sometime into it in 2021. I certainly hope we can. And I certainly hope we can do it with with friends. Let's see. If you're going to do the tequila train, at least half of us want to come along. Hey, the more the merrier. I think this is a fun activity, and I think if we can get a fun group to do it, it will be a lot of fun. James would love to go the tequila tour. Let's do it. Absolutely. Endless tequila. What could possibly go wrong? Well, an excess of, of projectile vomiting, maybe? Oh, I didn't say that, did I? Group charter, says Logan. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. 
Stephanie wants to go to Tequila Train. Claude wants to go to Tequila Train. Fuck it. Let's just forget about everything and go into Tequila Train, I say. Okay, so <laughs> everybody wants to go to the Tequila Train. This is so awesome. Okay, so now I have um, two headlines left about M Mexican traditions for New Year's Eve. There's no old line sign down here. We don't start da 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 da. We don't do that here. So there are some. Um, we have some traditions that I'm aware of because of my family, and I am going to. Oh, my sister sends me the best for 2021, hermanita. I love you. So, actually, hold on just a second. While my sister is here, hey, gorda, pon atención. Um, I'm going to mention some traditions that I know anything that I know nothing about. But my sister, who rules my family because she's the matriarch, will quickly um, correct me. And I hope that you will, hermanita, pon atención, put atención, um, because some of these Mexican traditions are like, what the fuck? Do we really do that as Mexicans? Check out this website. This one says, um, Siete Tradiciones Mexicanas de Año Nuevo, Seven Mexican New Year's Traditions. Let's see what the web thinks that we are to do or we have been doing. The first one being the grapes. Okay, to eat 12 grapes, uh, one for, oh, okay, there we go. You must eat 12 grapes, one for each and every one of the first 12 seconds of the new year. Uh, and you wish for something with each grape and you worry about chewing and swallowing at the same time. And maybe, just maybe, if you're able to uh, to eat one grape a second, your wishes will come true. Okay, so this I have done and this is fun. I like grapes. I don't mind that. Sweeping the house is number two. Sweeping the house because you get the dust out and that symbolizes you get the bad vibes out of your house. I don't know about sweeping the house, but I do know that I bought a lot of white vinegar yesterday because my toilet is going to get a spa day. Not sweeping, but yes, toilet VIP spa. Oh, number three, take a bath, shower. <laughs> you shower on New Year's Eve and um, or New Year's Day as the day starts, and you, you bathe your pets and this is supposed to be good. Never done it, never will. Well, I will shower because otherwise I'll stink, but this is news to me. Oh, this is the one that makes me laugh, and I've been asking my friends. You are to take, number four, is you are to take your empty suitcases for a walk. What the fuck is that? I never heard of it. And I asked a couple of friends, and they said, well, we've heard of it, but we've never done it. If you walk your empty suitcases, like around the block, or wherever you want, on New Year's Eve, um, the further you walk with your empty suitcases, the further you will travel. Well, traveling these days seems a little complicated, so I don't know that I'm going to be following that. I never heard of it. I never saw my parents, you know, whip out the suitcases, so I don't know about that one. Then number five is use colored underwear. This I've heard of before. Red is for love. Yellow is for money, and green is for prosperity. I am not wearing any underwear anyway, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, number six, throw water out the window. This is supposed to be for good luck. Um, never heard of that either. And of course, burning fireworks, which we're not even allowed to do this year, would be number seven. There you go. So I don't know what you think about these. Uh, most of these I haven't heard of or I don't practice them. Then there's another website that has some overlap. This one has 11 traditions, uh, Mexican traditions. Uh, oh, number one, uh, put two or three candles in a white dish with rice grains or beans or lentils and a, a, a chingadera of cinnamon. Um, and leave them on all night long um, tonight, and you will that this will bring abundance uh, to your home. Uh, an abundance of what the article doesn't say, but hey, you follow uh, you follow these rules and these rituals, and things will happen. Uh, what 
For good luck, tell your friends to throw coins onto a tray with a candle in the middle Why? while they ask for a wish or they, they say a prayer. Then you fill the tray with water and you light up the candle. Well, I don't mind the coins, but I never heard of this before. This is just very, very strange. Uh, number three for good fortune, um, cook lentils. Okay, never heard of it, but I have lentils. Maybe I'll cook lentils. Why do you know? Number four, the 12 grapes. We've talked about that. Number five, sweep the house. We talked about that in bathing, uh, uh, bathing your mascots, your pets, rather. Number six, this talks about uh, um, underwear again. Uh, oh, number seven, sweeping coins. So you can sweep the coins that you're going to drop on number, what was it, the tray. Well, you sweep the coins that you drop on the tray uh, trick that I mentioned earlier. Who comes up with these ideas? I don't know that anybody does this. Um, oh, wrap a red ribbon round a photograph of a person that you would like to go to bed with every night and that person will become the love of your life oh my goodness and number nine uh fireworks not allowed number 10 take your suitcases out again and in number 11 is of course the recalentado which is the leftovers that you are to eat tomorrow that you cooked today so these are just points of departure for crazy ideas if you want to be mexican today just try some of these things most of these things i've never done um and um and i'm going to take a look at some of your comments my sister is showing laughs and my sister is saying no way i don't know exactly what to but let me see how you reacted to all these chingaderas my goodness let's see uh have a great new year but i'm bum uh i always laugh about the colorful uh, the color of your underwear will rainbow undies cover all i would say so gary i think uh you are to do that uh let's see preparing the bottles of bubbly and champagne flutes filled with show grapes for each room we have tonight here at villa lola oh logi uh, so sweep and shower once a year. That sounds good to me, although you might not take kindly to my unshaved look after a few days. Uh, let's see. I know people who clean the house, balance the bank accounts, etc., etc. That sounds healthy. Uh, let's see. Number four did that. Lovely. Okay, so you guys are up for this. I'm walking my suitcases to my new home congratulations uh to dina i love it uh, if your toilet needs a spa day that's bad no i call it a spa day just to get myself excited about cleaning the toilet there is nothing fun about cleaning the toilet what does no underwear mean oh, that's very simple um mushi no underwear means that you can more easily scratch the midlands that's why I'm not wearing any underwear. Commando sounds just fine. Um, let's see. Let's see. My sister said a bunch of yeses and noes, but I don't know exactly what she's referring to. Um, my cousin says rainbow underwear just in case missing something. I love it. Um, so all kinds of comments. <clears throat> what are you doing? What are you all doing for New Year's Eve? I am, oh my God, somebody that I don't recognize says, puras mamadas, it's just a crock of shit. Um, well, I'm not so sure about that. Some people may want to be into one thing or another. Can I substitute 12 glasses of wine for 12 grapes? I think that's a fabulous idea, Nina, and that's exactly what I'd like to do. Happy New Year, Nina, I love you. Um, <laughs> Norma wants a Tom Brady photo. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, very wonderful. Anyhow, those were all suggestions. I know what I'm doing for New Year's. I started grocery shopping um, about, well, I told you I went shopping about three or four days ago. And um, and yesterday I got wine. I went to Costco. It was, it was chaotic, but well-organized. You had to wait in line to get into Costco. 
and inside it was just jam-packed with people doing last minute purchases all i needed was wine the magnums that i've been buying thanks to nina uh the fyi uh red wine magnums are gone they're gone from their stock so what am i doing i'm not leaving the house until sunday if all goes well i have a list of things to watch on netflix i have some cleaning to do i have some editing to do um i have some chilling and resting and i have some baking to do and you can take that to mean whatever you want um but not only that kind of baking i actually purchased some uh, dry yeast because i want to try to make try making some some breads that i've been researching so i'm just staying home um to enjoy luna and to enjoy home, I really don't want to be out. If with any luck, I'll be in bed and asleep tonight by 11. And I'll be woken up by all the fireworks that nobody's supposed to be lighting up tonight. But I will be spending a lot of time over the, the rest of the day and tomorrow and the rest of the week about all the wonderful things that happened this year because there are uh, wonderful things that happened uh, this year, and for starters, I'm having a conversation with 148 wonderful things that happened this year, and that would be you. You became a very, very important, if not fundamental, piece of my equation, both financially and emotionally and creatively. It is thanks to this community and a couple of other things that I do for work that I've been able to remain curious and remain uh a researcher and going out and having my legs hurt from the walking and learning from you and creating connections between you and our destination and our country and our culture and our things. Uh, this has been the most wonderful bit of news I could have hoped for. My sister asks, am I going to broadcast tomorrow? I cannot think of a better way to start the year than to starting the year with all of our coffee and headlines friends. So the year is over and it's been interesting. And I hope that next year continues to be interesting, but continues to be hopeful. Um, so today I wish you a very, very happy new year. And I wish you for, I wish for you to have a great celebration, a safe celebration with your loved ones um, and I wish for you the very best, the very best um, today and tomorrow and every single day for that matter. That's it. We're done. This is the last broadcast of the year. And now it's time to spa the toilet. It's time to do some cooking. It's time. It's wine o'clock. It's 1113. So goodbye. I'm going to go drink some wine. Happy, happy new year to everyone. And seriously, thank you so much for being a part of my life. You make a big difference, and I'm very grateful for that.